How's it going? Fox back again. Another request. I feel like it's never ending. I'll do one. I'll get four more today. Hey ho, it's good to have something to do. So yeah, this is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, that is the sound we're going to be making today. Not the drums, just the sound. Uh, it was requested by Ayman Aj Ajarani. Please excuse me. He's from Morocco. I'm not, there's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce that. Hope I did it some justice. Yeah, he wanted me to make this sound, which is another vintage culture deep house bass. I'm starting to know who's in the who with Deep House and New Disco. These vintage culture are excellent. That's a really, really crisp sound. I liked it. So yeah, that's what I've done. There'll be a link in the description so you can compare the track to this, compare my bass to the one in this track. This patch is also free to downloadable. There is a link in the description. So let's solo it. sick there you go so we are going to initialize this uh, pretty straightforward a little bit of something different today with a note all the key tracking, controlling a few different parameters, nothing to it, two saw waves and a sub oscillator. So we are going to go ahead and initialize this. Uh, I'll just say quickly before we go through this, make sure you subscribe up here if you enjoy this or any of my other tutorials. Really does spur me on to keep sitting in here every night doing your requests. <laughs> so yeah, oscillator one, two octaves down, saw wave, four voices unison. We'll detune back so it doesn't push it too wide. On the main amp envelope, we're going to pull the sustain down a bit. Oscillator B is a saw wave as well. This one is going to go down three octaves. Three voices in unison. D tune exactly the same place, around about 0.9. I'll just show you the MIDI notes in this clip. I normally make bass patches monophonic in regards to that you can only play one note at a time. This definitely sounded like it had two layers, uh, a lot more high harmonics as with a patch that I did earlier on in the week. But re rather than create two inst instances of the same patch being monophonic and have them an octave apart, I've just left it as it is, not monophonic, I've left it polyphonic, 16 voices, so you can play two notes at the same time. Not ideal for a bass patch, you might want to sw uh, switch it to mono yourself. So yeah, these notes are ranging from C2 to C3. So if you want to make this, you're really going to want to be pitching it around about the C2. And then down two octaves, down three octaves. Sub oscillator, click it, keep it on a sine wave, down one, volume on full. Nothing too crazy at the minute. We're going to have a little bit of FM from the sub oscillator on oscillator one, or oscillator A. I'm doing this a lot on deep house bases now. This FM from a sub, when it's a sine wave, it, if you don't push it above 25, 26, 27%, it just like adding an extra bit of low end, you listen to it creeping. Anything past that starts to distort and sounds FM-y. Yeah, 25% seems a bit of a sweet spot, just helps 
add a few extra harmonics higher up the spectrum, but then it helps beef the low end up as well. So yes, that is the basic oscillator set up. The filter, as always, is a low pass filter, but it's a steep one again, a low 24. I'm finding with Serum, these work a lot better than the 12 decibel per octave filter. Push the start and position out to about 3000 hertz. We want to drive it, make it fat. Pull the master volume down so it's not clipping. Resonance. So yeah, we've got a lot of modulation going on. We want A and B going into the filter and the sub is going directly out. So click this button here. The sub is not being affected by any of the effects or the filter. Okay, set the filter envelope up. Envelope 2 as always. I always use envelope 2 because envelope 1 is automatically mapped to the filter cutoff. We want to pull it all the way down to dead zero. Don't worry, and the way we set the envelope up, it's never going to get that far because we've got quite a long attack on the envelope. So envelope 2. Envelope 2, we want full sustain. Decay of around about 800 milliseconds and about a second's worth of attack. Um, this curve has a drastic effect on how the envelope works. If it's like that, if it's like a negative curve, as I call it, where it's uh, more deeper at the bottom, it takes longer. If it's sharper at the top, it's quicker. Right, as I'm playing this, you can see this bit here, note, I don't think I've ever done this in a tutorial, so I'll explain what it is, basically. Um, if you imagine the piano keyboard going from this point here to the right there, this diagonal line you can use as a modulator. So, um, if you imagine uh, the modulation amount is bottom to top and the keys are left to right, at the bottom here is going to be a little bit of modulation on the lower notes. On the higher notes higher modulation. You can use this for anything you want. We're going to make the curve even steeper like this. So now as you go up the keys on a 49 key key bed you're pretty much covering the whole spectrum and we want to drag this. We want this to affect the cutoff all the way around just back a little bit and a resonance. What this means that on the higher notes in this mini clip i.e. these sort of jump notes where it jumps an octave up, it's going to get open the filter up even more and give a little bit more resonance. It's a drastic effect, you're going to hear it straight away. Brilliant, well that's cool, if you want it even steeper just drag these in. The more steeper the curve, the less travel it's got to go as you go through the octaves for the modulation to work. So yeah, very, very cool. That modulates. That's modulating them two parameters. Uh, that's the patch pretty much done. Uh, we've got to add a couple of effects. I use a hyperdimension. Turn the mix down to pretty much dead zero, about 6%. I use that key tracking to bring the mix of the note, the note sorry i keep calling it key tracking but it's pretty much the same thing the note to bring in the mix of the detune so on those higher notes it's going to flick the detune around around about 45 percent 
and the detune is going to get the filter envelope envelope two so drag it drop it on the detune missed push that around to about 30 percent same thing filter envelope as it the uh, envelope two as it's closing the filter up it's going to open the detune round on the hyper The only other effect is an EQ. I used it to boost some frequencies. About 5 decibels of boost at around 180 hertz, so proper bass territory. Got a wide-ish Q, 37%. And I also put a high pass filter, pulled the Q down to 50% so it's not having any effect and the frequency around about 4000 hertz. That's the patch done, easy peasy. Um, the only thing I did do in the matrix section is I mapped the velocity to global amp and set it on full because inside this midi clip that i've got here these higher notes playing an octave up if i circle some of them you can see their velocity is just slightly down on the the main bassy sort of notes which are around the c2 mark so velocity to amp enables you then to control the velocity of serum with inside your door really straightforward so yeah that's the patch done nothing to it Download it for free. Two saw waves. Most of these deep house bases are a saw and a square mix. Uh, I could tell from this one straight away it was just saw waves an octave apart. So yeah, this is it with that little beat again. There you go, patch done. That is um, vintage culture based with serum. As I said earlier, make sure you subscribe. Any requests, message me through my Facebook page. I'll work my way through them. Okay, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.